Even if we're not happy, it's happy. What does that mean? I'll tell you later. Happy, happy life, happy journey. Welcome to Walking the Path. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day to be here with you. Um, December 15th. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so, so glad you're joining. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for streaming in. Uh, today, a couple weeks before Christmas, a couple weeks before the new year, a week before Christmas, uh, you know, a couple weeks before the new year. It's a lot going what on this time of year? How's everybody doing? Hey, everybody, what's up? Good to see you. Um, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to chat with you. I I w wanted to. What? Vinny, Brennan, great to see you guys, man. Great to see everybody. Thank you for showing up. So really quickly, I want to tell you a little bit about Rhythmia, and then I want to tell you about what B 2023. Merry Christmas, homegrown herbs and joy. <laughs> love to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. I love the comments coming in. Thank you so much. Beautiful to have you. So, you know, this Facebook live is, um, hello, my brother. Wow. So good to see you on a, uh, uh, this Facebook live is under the auspices of rhythm. And I get to talk about all sorts of stuff, but the first and most important thing to tell you about rhythmia this beautiful place. And I was thinking, you know, I usually talk about the soul merger and what happens at Rhythmia, but I want to tell you this more than anything, what you don't know that goes on behind the scenes at Rhythmia. Why do 97.55% of guests at Rhythmia have a life-changing miracle while they're there? Because of the staff and the medicine, right? Medicine, but the medicine and the staff, wow. And what you don't know goes beyond on behind the scenes while you're enjoying your retreat there is everybody is engaged with making sure that you have a transformative experience and not just engaged, but we're working behind the scenes in a clinical way, making sure that each guest is where they need to be. I mean, it's like individual connection, individual service, individual care, individual attention to make sure that you're getting what you need so that you can get what you want, which is a life-changing miracle. And what is that life-changing miracle? That life-changing miracle is that we see who we've become. We see, some, we see what we're trying to hide. We're seeing what we're trying to protect. We see what we're trying to shield and keep from the rest of the world. That seeing who I've become is actually narrowing the gap between who we present to the world and who we really are. And when there's discord, there's a big gap between whom I'm presenting to the world and who I really am. As we narrow that gap, the more authentic, the more real we are, the more we find life meeting us in amazing ways. So that's what's going on at Rhythmia. And I want to encourage you. There's a number right there, Whoop. <laughs> there. <laughs> on the screen. It's not on that screen. It's not on Instagram screen, but it's on the Facebook screen. Call the number, find out if this is the thing for 2023 for you. Now, in the meantime, let me tell you about 2023. What is your New Year's? If y'all want to send in a, 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 a chat, a response, what do you guys do for New Year's in terms of planning as the year closes and setting your New Year's intentions, right? Um, and I want to talk about that in two ways. One is an actual process of what you can do. We're going to start now and work towards the new year. And the second is the second is um, the uh, acknowledgement of guilt and shame. Because what happens is we have these big aspirations for the new year. And then we lose the momentum. We lose the steam. Rumi, great to see you, brother. I love you. So, so the second piece of, sending, sent, of setting New Year's intentions is releasing guilt and shame around those intentions, right? Hey, Debbie, aloha, sister. Great to see you. So first of all, New Year's process. What is your New Year's process? Here's what I've been doing the last couple of years, and I really like it. The first thing I do is starting now is I go back and I review the year month by month, right? So just a month by month review of the year. I do a little mind map. If you don't know what mind mapping is, it's a great way to get out your ideas and not be structured in a sort of like main topic, sub point setting, you know, kind of outline form. Uh, it allows me to get all my ideas out. If you don't know about mind mapping, 
go online, type in mind mapping, a bunch of stuff will come up and, and you'll see how to do it. So I mind map each month, January of last year, just kind of, what do I remember happening? I might go back through my journal, look at, look at what was going on. Look at my calendar. Oh, oh yeah, this happened. It just, you know, mind map each month. These are the main things that happen and are coming up in my awareness. The next thing I do after I mind map the year, month by month, is what did I learn? What lessons did I learn from, um, from each of those things that occurred in my life? And, and so then from there, I can look to see what do I want to call in in 2023? Now, very interesting. Um, I'm shifting away. Last year, my my what am I calling in in 2023 looked like a lot of doing. I want this, I'm looking at this, and this is happening, and I'm bringing that in. And it was a lot of activity, a lot of things to do. Um, now, this year, it's changing a little bit. This year, uh, it's more about releasing guilt and shame. It's more about you know, uh, and being so, uh, in a different way, right? There's like more generalized, like I'm setting an intention and in the social piece being social for me, uh, and, and making connections, um, really stems out of, uh, kind, kind of wanting to, to have more connection in my life. Because what I found over the last year is that I have, um, created a sanctuary for myself in um i've created a sanctuary for myself at home but it's also been isolating and i i needed that sanctuary but now you know coming out of covid and all that we've been isolated for so long uh and and last year i kind of was still in that mm, not not anything about fear of covid but i was just in that sort of got used to being isolated and and so it's like oh next year i want to increase more of my social interaction now, normally I would be like, I'm going to join this group. I'm going to be more uh, active in these areas. I'm going to reach out to family. I'm going to make calls to my family. I'm going to, right. I'd, I'd set out the things that I want to do this year. Instead of doing that, I am saying just simply my intention is connection, social connection, and to release anything that blocks those connections. Right. So instead of listing, I'm going to join this group, I'm going to call my brothers and sisters once a week, I'm going to call my friends, all the things that I think I would do that would instill connection. And I'm just going to make a broad statement. My intention is connection and being social in 2023 and releasing anything that blocks that connection. So <clears throat> once we get our intentions down, like what are we calling forth? What would I like to experience? Really, what would I love to experience in 2023? That's your question. Not what do I need to change about myself? What do I need to fix? I'm going to start working out. I'm going to go back to the gym. I'm going to all that. It's like, what would I love to experience? Well, if it's about working out and losing weight and all that, maybe I would love to experience radical health and wholeness. I would love to experience a love of my body just the way it is, right? Like that's the kind of, uh, that's the feeling that I'm going into 2023 with. So instead of like, I'm gonna work out, uh, I'm gonna do cardio, I'm gonna eat healthy. It's like, I'd like to experience, what would I love to experience in 2023? I'd love to experience uh, a, a new relationship with my body, being in love with my body and making healthy choices. Um, I'd love to experience dynamic health and vitality in 2023, you know? so. A broader statement. Now, once I have those intentions down, then we're going to write a letter. And I got this from my good friend, uh, Giovanni Bartolomeo. Write a letter to yourself from your January 2024 self saying, hey, JJ, I just want to let you know what 2023 was. It was amazing. You experienced connection and social social connection and intimate connection in a way you never have before. Um, you found yourself in so many wonderful settings, right? You start telling yourself what 2023 is going to be like uh, in the area of the body temple. Uh, 2023 was an amazing year. You fell in love with your body. You had a different relationship with your body and it was so easy to, to move your body and to stay healthy and to eat healthy. Those things were effortless because you loved yourself, right? So, so the, here's the three part new year's program that I'm doing and I want you guys to do it. Number one, review the year. 
month by month, mind map each month. What am I doing this month? What am I doing this year? Or what did I do last year? What did I do in month January? What did I do? What were the main things? And then once you look back and you mind map each month, um, what lessons did I learn? What were the lessons that I learned in that month? And then finally, uh, the next piece is to look at, based on this last year, what would you like to experience? What would I love to experience? Not what would I like to experience? What would I love to experience in 2023? What I love, love is a high vibration. What would I love to experience in 2023? And then listing out those things, and then I'm gonna write myself a letter from 2024, letting my 2023, 2022, December 22, 2022 self say, hey, this is what your year was like. Now, the thing about that letter is you got to really feel it. The most important thing, the universe doesn't hear us. The universe feels us. The most important thing is that what you're writing down that you would love to experience, you feel is possible and it excites you. Like, and you feel it, like feel it, like as you're writing it, you're seeing who's there. What are the tastes, the smells, the colors, the feelings, the sensations? What are the emotions? I want you to really get into the sensory uh, experience of what that is like, as if you're already experiencing it. This is the most important part of manifestation, right? Um, lots of, like, there's a clear way to manifest. It's a, a, a kind of point by point system. The first thing is you have to have a clear intention. And the second thing is you've got to have a high emotion. You've got to have a feeling. You've got to generate the feeling uh, that it's already done. And, and that is based on the, the spiritual principle of the law of reversibility. The law of reversibility states that in the physical world, it's an actual law of reversibility in the physical world. If heat can generate friction, then friction can generate heat, right? If he, if friction can generate electricity, then electricity can generate friction. If magnetism can generate electricity, then electricity can generate magnetism. There's a certain law of reversibility in the physical world. In the spiritual world, it works like this. If having this, the experience of radical health and wholeness in my body would generate a feeling of confidence, joy, uh, security, comfort, um, whatever, well-being, uh, um, longevity, it, whatever I would be feeling if I had that. So if having the, having the experience of radical health in my body would generate a feeling of gratitude and awe and wonder and joy, then consistently generating a feeling of attitude of, of gratitude, awe, wonder, and joy will create physical health and wholeness in my body. If having the car or having the million dollars or having the relationship would generate a feeling of security, a feeling of joy, a feeling of love, a feeling of bounty, a feel, whatever that feeling is, if it's gonna, if, if having the relationship will generate a feeling of security and, and love and intimacy, then generating the feeling of security, love and intimacy will call forth the relationship. If the thing creates the feeling, then the feeling can create the thing. That's the law of reversibility on the spiritual world. So when you're writing your letter, a 2023, 2024 letter to your 2022 December or January 2023 self, you want to be sure that you're feeling it. The universe doesn't hear us. The universe feels us. And so this piece of, of the manifestation puzzle is super important. So the letter that you write You've got to really feel it. You've got to really love it. You've got to, it's got to, it's got to land for you. Okay. And then once you write that letter and it feels good and keep it short enough because you're going to work with it throughout the year. This is the key piece. I want you to work with this letter. I wrote a letter last year and I was really good in the beginning of the year of working with my letter. And I wasn't so good at the end of the year, you know, towards the end of the year of working with it. A lot of the things manifested in my letter already. Now, how much more powerful would that be if I worked with it on a consistent basis? So that's the next piece is that after you write that letter, at least once a week in your contemplation, in your meditation, you're going to work with that letter. You're going to read it and you're going to feel it. You're going to generate the feeling tone. So that is our New Year's process that I want to share with you. Now, the other thing around a New Year's process is guilt and shame. And I've been working with this a lot recently because um, I've noticed this cycle of guilt and shame uh, that happens in my body when I don't 
when I'm doing certain things, there are certain habits that I feel bad about doing and I want to stop them, but I can't stop them, right? Well, there's a lot of research that shows that the, the body is as addicted to the emotion as it is to a, uh, it's as, as addicted to emotion as it is to a drug because those emotions trigger a release of certain chemicals in our body and the body gets addicted to the cortisol or to the adrenaline that the, that the hypothalamus is releasing based on our emotional response. So we actually get addicted to feeling guilty. We get addicted to feeling shame or feeling bad. And then we try and stop this behavior or shift a behavior and the body's, oh no, we, we, it's like, why can't I stop doing this? Because we're, we're in this cycle, this guilt, shame cycle. And so the first piece of, of understanding that is to know, to notice the guilt and shame, to notice that you're actually shaming ourselves. What do you say to yourself about yourself when you don't meet your commitments? And typically it's, I'm bad. This, this, it's bad to smoke. It's bad to eat this. It's bad to not exercise. It's bad. Right. And so if I don't exercise or if I overeat, um, then I'm bad. Right. And it's a real simple, very simple, but that's what we say to ourselves. So begin to notice where you are, where I am, where we are really shaming ourselves and increasing this guilt cycle. And, and the first piece of unwinding that pattern is to notice that I'm shaming myself or guilting myself for doing something or not doing something, an act, activity that I want to stop or an activity that I want to start. The next piece is to bring absolute love to yourself. Now that's the hard part because we're like, how do I, if I want to, if I want to get healthy and I want to start working out in the new year, and I don't work out, I should be mad at myself. I should condemn myself because, you know, I'm letting myself off the hook. That's the way I normally would have thought, right? To really, you know, kick myself in the butt. But condemnation never works. Condemnation never solves anything. In fact, condemnation never liberates, only acceptance. So love and acceptance are very similar, right? Love and acceptance are very similar. Uh, in the sense that if I love myself, I'm accepting myself. If I love myself, I'm accepting that part of me. So when I, so let's say I set the intention that I want to work out, I want to, I want to uh, be healthy in 2023. And then I, I'm really good for the first week. And then the second week, it gets a little iffy. And then the third week, and by the end of January, I'm back to where I was. And it's like, screw it. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not doing it anyway. And I'm feeling bad. And I just sort of can't break that habitual pattern. So if we begin first, like I didn't work out, okay. And then I notice the guilt and shame that I'm causing myself. And then I can accept that part of me. I've talked to you guys about it before, about putting a Buddha on it, right? Oh, there's my lazy Buddha. Okay. There's a part of me that wants to be lazy right now. All right, lazy Buddha. What if I accepted that instead of forcing against it? What if I, brother Jeff, good to see you. Roberto, good to see you. Shannon, so good, everybody. Um, what if I accepted that part of myself? What if I loved that part of myself that didn't do my workout, that didn't do the thing that I wanted to do or continue to do the behavior that I wanted to stop? What if I said, there's my smoky Buddha. There's my lazy Buddha. What if I said that and allowed myself to accept that part of myself? Because there's not one part of you or me that doesn't deserve to be loved and accepted. I kind of remember this myself so much. There's not one part of us that doesn't deserve to be loved and accepted. And that part that's, that we're not doing, uh, Debbie over here says radical self-compassion. Yes, Debbie, exactly. And, 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 and not only that, there's that part of me that wants, that needs to be loved. It's more love, not less. The part of me didn't make the workout that didn't stop the activity that I wanted to stop. That part of me, is the part that needs more love less it needs more love so um so that's the other piece so we want to first notice the guilt shame cycle and then we want to bring compassion and acceptance more than compassion it's acceptance i'm accepting every part of me i'm accepting every part of myself there's not one part of me that doesn't deserve to be loved especially the part that didn't work out especially the part that couldn't stop eating in the middle of the night or whatever it is that we're working on, right? 
So that's the that's our New Year's talk for today. We're going to be working with this a little bit more next week. So remember, your New Year's program is first review the year month by month, make a mind map of each month. Second, what did you learn? What lessons did you learn that year? Third, what are you calling forth? What would you love to experience in 2023? What would I love to experience? And then finally, write a letter to yourself telling yourself so that you're already feeling, you're floating, you're already feeling that it's already happened. I already have the health. I already have the money. I already have the relationship. I already have all of that that, that I would love to experience in 2023. And then the final piece of that is I'm making my intentions instead of more broad, like I want a relationship. It's I, my intention is um, my attention. My intention in 2023 is connection and being social and, and releasing anything that that blocks that. That's my intention in 2023. OK, I'm so grateful for each of you joining us today. Day. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I just step into a moment of gratitude right now. I'm so grateful and thankful for this day, just to be alive today. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful that right now, everything, all my needs are met. All your needs are met right now. Right this second, all your needs are met. Everything that you need right now, if you're watching this, you're okay. Right this second. I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about next month. I'm talking about right now, right now, right this second, all my needs are met right now. It's the same thing we were talking about earlier. I'm feeling all my needs are met. I'm generating the feeling tone, the vibrational frequency of all needs met right now, right here, right now, all is well, right, here, right now. I have everything I need right here, right now. I need everything that I have. That's what I'm saying. I'm generating that feeling tone. And I'm knowing that each one of you has all of your needs met. Everything is met with lavish abundance for each one of us live in a friendly universe that is constantly providing for us, constantly working on our behalf. I know that any obstacle that is standing in your way is cleared. All obstacles are cleared. Only angels and blessings remain on your path. Today is the day, the appointed time for you to fulfill your destiny, the place you're destined to fulfill, a place of love, of joy, of happiness, of fulfillment, of intimacy and, and harmony and balance and order, of abundance and prosperity, of flow, of oneness, a deeper realization of oneness. All obstacles are cleared for the best expression of you, the fullest expression, the fullest expression of your gifts and talents into the world. Because the world needs you more than ever right now. More than ever. So I'm so grateful to speak this word, knowing that each one in the sound of my voice, listening now or later, knows the truth of their being, one with God, one with life, one with beauty, one with intelligence, one with divine order, harmony, and balance, one with abundance and prosperity, one, one with it all. And it is that realization of oneness that carries us through, for it is not I but the spirit within that does the work. Of my own self, I do nothing. So I let go and I let the spirit run my life and lead me. I know each of you are led moment by moment by a divine intelligence that knows no opposite, knows no um, opposition. It only knows its own fulfillment. And you are the fulfillment of divine intelligence right here and right now. And so I'm so grateful to speak this word, to, to know that each one is a blessing. I don't bless anything for you're already blessed. You're already a blessing. Life has been the biggest blessing we've ever received for the spirit loves us. So it gives us life without condition, no condition. We can choose whatever we want to do. And you chose to listen to this. Wow. You're amazing. I'm so grateful for you. I love you and I appreciate you. And so it is. Amen. All right, everybody. Love you.